So no again. Well, we have managed to clean the block up. Uh, we took the block out. We took the block outside. We got some mineral spirits and a uh, and a uh, paint gun. We load the paint gun up with mineral spirits, put it on a really strong stream, and we basically clean the entire block, all the bearing surfaces, the crank, um, everything as best we could. Point now, we want to keep the form material down. We want to keep the dust, the debris, other things, why it was covered up with the plastic bag just now. Um, after after I washed it with mineral spirits, I hosed it with air, I dried it as best I could with air. And then I took uh, WD-40 and I fully lubricated the block. Um, every surface I could reasonably get to, I lubricated it. Uh, just to prevent flash rust, uh, once I'd taken off the uh, machine this original oil coating so um, anyway we're ready for reassembly we still don't have the heads still don't have the pistons but we're going to go ahead and move forward let's talk a little bit about order of assembly uh, one of my concerns is installing the camshaft without nicking a camshaft bearing and so we're going to go ahead and install the camshaft first uh, that way uh, once i clear the, the crank here i'll be able to use my hand to uh, help guide the uh, the camshaft in you certainly can put it in later. Um, it's a little bit more of a tricky trying to fish it into the holes in the bearings. So we're going to go ahead and uh, initially here we're going to take the, uh, the mains off and then we're going to lay the crank aside. Uh, I've got some a nice surface to put it on some paper, uh, craft paper to uh, set it on. Hopefully it doesn't pick up too much foreign material. And, uh, and once we do that we'll have access to uh, install the cam. So for now, mains come off, and uh, and then out comes the out comes the crankshaft. So my suggestion is, as you go through this process, be very cautious about foreign materials uh, once you get the block cleaned up. Uh, foreign materials, and any motor can be a problem. In a high horsepower motor, when it's going to run at relatively high RPMs, uh, just that much more damage is done. So, uh, mains all look good. So we'll be sticking the crank in as soon as we get the camshaft installed. So, installation of the camshaft. Uh, first, be sure and keep track of your cam card. When you buy a cam, a new cam, it should come with a cam card. This is my comp cams uh, cam card. If you necessarily read it, but gives you uh, all the lifts uh, on the various valves, gives you the angles and those kind of things that you need to debris the cam. And uh, so, Whatever you do, don't lose that. Uh, I can get my camshaft out of plastic here. Be very, very careful. Not to drop your cam. Be very, very careful what you rest your cam on. And uh, we're gonna start by installing loosely the uh, camshaft end bolt. Uh, potentially lose that, use that for leverage. Uh, they actually make uh, handles that you can uh, put on here. It'll stick out the end so you have some leverage 
and you're trying to get your cam in position. Now for the messy part. You need to be sure you use plenty of assembly lube. Uh, there's any number of brands of assembly lube out there. I'm certainly not going to recommend one. We're going to start by lubing up the uh, first two pistons worth of cam here. This happens to be Royal Purple Assembly Lube. There's any number of assembly lubes out there. But basically, you do not want to go in dry uh, until it gets oiling. Uh, once you uh, get the motor running, it's all moving well. You want to have lubrication. So we're going to initiate it into the first bearing and get it in there part way, being very careful about potentially nicking a bearing surface. We'll stick it into the second bearing, and then we're going to hold. Now we can lubricate, pretty much lubricate the rest of the cam here. Um, it's a mess. Well, you see I'm wearing gloves. Not generally too big on the gloves. They really limit my dexterity. But uh, in this case, uh, lube is good. And uh, so we're going to use the gloves just to minimize the mess. I'm going to lube the distributor, bear, uh, distributor gear as well. Make sure everything is well lubed. And then we're going to start easing it on into the engine. And it's bearing by bearing. You need to watch your lobes as best you can. Up here in the front, it's not too bad. I only got two bearings. Two bearings to deal with. Now we're into our third bearing passage and it just gets more and more interesting to try to feed this little guy up in there. Now one thing that we're not going to check today, you won't see me check today, uh, right now is bearing in play, uh, I'm, excuse me, camshaft in play. Uh, we're going to deal with the camshaft in play a little later. Right now, just for to install it while I have access. better access with the crank out get in place uh, installing the pistons should pose no threat to the camshaft unless I do it terribly wrong okay bearing by bearing very very slowly very very carefully lots of lobes lots of edges and Lots of bearings to deal with, so I think doing it this way for me at least gives me a little more, a little more freedom um, to get it in place without worrying about, without worrying about tearing up bearings. So, oh, neat. Wash that bolt before I put it back in. Don't need that bolt right now, luckily. Now we're going to look at the camshaft retainer um, it's nice it gives you all the details his back bottom there's an oil slot here we're going to go ahead also and put a little lube on that just to uh, reinforce lubrication between the cam and the, the thrust plate here and uh, remember in this case the motor's upside down so what was bottom is now top so this little guy going to go on just like that. Have a couple bolts. Now on the bolts, um, I'm fond of torque lubricants. Um, if you just torque, you can torque with just motor oil, put motor oil on the bolt. You get a torque, you can use other, other lubricants. Um, if you believe the advertisements, at least, publications, the um, ARP, uh, fastener assembly lube uh, gives you some of the most reproducible torque settings and so that's what we're going to use on pretty much all our bolts that we torque that require torque, a measured torque and uh, basically you just put it on the bolt and uh, I like to smear it around, why not? I've got on gloves anyway so we're going to smear that around, get it down into the threads and then we're going to start lining up the bolt holes 
on the hand thrust plate and get them started in there. These particular bolts, 10 foot pounds, the 7 16s head, 10 foot pounds of torque, and uh, they're quite small little guys. They're just there to hold that retainer plate in place or that thrust plate in place to uh, keep the cam just where we want it to be. So there we go. So the cam's in place. The rear cam galley plug is not in place. So you can actually push the cam through further than it would ever want to ride. Uh, so we're going to deal with that just a little bit later and uh, get that cam set in place uh, for its long-term use. And we'll check the cam thrust uh, clearances at that point and not worry about it until then. So I've got a got my uh, wonderful little torque gauge here. And we're going to set it to 10 pounds of torque, which is not much. And then we'll go ahead and put these on in there. I like to get a snug first. And uh, before I worry about actually setting the torque, there's a pop. There's a pop. I always go back several times on all of my torque settings to make sure they're there. Okay, so we are at 10 foot pounds of torque and we're happy with the installation on the camshaft. So, camshaft's in. Now it's time to install the crank. Um, one thing we're going to do here is have a microfiber towel minimize the uh, amount of possible for materials. We're going to wipe off the mains, which are heavily coated right now with uh, WD-40 oil. WD-40 oil. We get them where they will retain the assembly lube. And we're going to put in Assembly lube for each of the five mains. Assembly lube, good stuff. If it gets elsewhere, it's not going to hurt anything. Unless it's on your laundry, I don't know, maybe on your wife's furniture, that could be a problem. But uh, otherwise, assembly lube is good. I like to go ahead and coat the bearing surface as much as I can now. We've measured clearances when we blueprinted the motor on the main bearings. Um, and because I don't have as much accuracy as the machine shop would have with my instrumentation, I'm not 100% on the clearances. Clearances all look okay. Uh, one of them is, I think the largest measurement I had was 20, uh, 25 ten thousandths, which is a bit higher than I'd like. So, I'm hopeful that when we measure with plastic age, we're actually going to find that it was more my inaccuracies than anything else. Okay, don't do what I just did. The, uh, not that it hurt anything, but if you'll note, these particular fasteners, the uh, stud fasteners here, which support the, the uh, windage tray, we have these nice little washers, and these washers were down at the bottom. If I don't take them out now, once I put the crank in, they're going to be really hard to get to. So, we're going to take these off, set them aside. Okay, that will work out much, much better. Now we're going to try again to install the crank. Be very careful not to, not to nick 
any of the mains or the studs. There we go. And it's in. We're not going to rotate it. The reason we're not going to rotate it is we do not want a bunch of assembly lube up on these main surfaces. The reason we don't rotate this to touch so my oil holes are clear. Um, the reason we don't want assembly lube up here is because we're going to plastic age and we're going to put our small plastic strips there on the mains and uh, <coughs> and torque everything down and then recheck everything so let's uh let's not do that so we can put our main blocks back in place again uh no we can't do that yet first we need to get our plastic gauge we've got some pieces of plastic gauge here five of them to be exact and uh if you've not used plastic gauge, reference you to my earlier videos on the 4.7 liter or any number of other um, other videos on the use of plastic gauge. This is where gloves do not work for me because they do not give me enough dexterity. So I'm trying to handle this plastic gauge, it's tiny. Uh, this is the green plastic gauge comes in different colors based on the clearance allowances that you expect for our mains. We expect clearance allowance uh, that's between the limits of this plastic gauge. I think this particular plastic gauge max is three thousandths, if I'm not mistaken, the green. And uh, so this is what we need to do. We need to use basically have to put it on there and then we're going to install our main caps we're going to torque them to spec and and remove them and measure the deformation of the plastic thread and uh, go from there say yeah it's like your dog sometimes you got to talk to it So all our little pieces are in place and we're going to begin to start setting our mains. So be careful when you set your mains, do not disturb your plastic gauge if possible. And uh, make sure that they all have their arrows pointing in the right direction, which so far these do. Plastic gauge is there. So all our mains in. Now we will come back when we take these off and check our plastic gauge. We will come back and uh, apply a lubricant, assembly lube, to the bearing surface that we currently have not applied it to. So, here we go. Initially, just take them, take them down to snug. we torque them. One thing we'll also do in final assembly is we'll apply that same torque lubricant uh, just to make sure that we get Final accurate torque for final assembly. Not too worried about it. For this part that we want to have it torqued, it's a little bit off. Not going to significantly change our plastic reading. I 
did uh, tap these holes to make sure that we were good and clean. We had good thread lock surface. So hopefully our plastic gauge stayed where it was supposed to. We're going to begin here by setting a torque, different torque wrench, and 70 pounds is what's required for these bolts. So we're going to turn it up to 70 foot-pounds. These are not easy to read. I think it's the uh, fact that I'm getting older. It doesn't help anything. All right, so there's 70 foot-pounds. We'll lock it down. Now, not much way to do this, but get in your way. I might be able to go to the other side. I like to go around and snug them all with the torque wrench before I go to final torque. Okay, we'll take these to final torque, do them in a pair, go to the end. Wow. There we go. Okay, we're going to switch for our studded mains. I'm not going to torque yet, just tightening them up. Okay, that one went to torque. There's one. There's one. Didn't put the pin back in my motor stand. There we go. Okay. Now they're torqued. We like to wait a few minutes. And we like to let the plastic gauge properly deform. And watch it from there. Okay. Well, we... Uh, we waited a few minutes to let the plastic gauge conform to the space between the bearings and now loosened up all of the main bolts and nuts and uh, now we're going to remove the main blocks and take a look at our result now these main blocks always always tight so it takes a little bumping to get them to go uh, these are particularly difficult because they don't they have to come up over the studs makes them a little tricky you want to try to get them up as easily as you can so that you don't change your plastic gauge reading not doing so good We will come back to it. There we go. Another one loose. There we go. It's 
going to see our plastic gauge. One more. I'm trying to do this as I've turned the crank because of the plastic gauge. It makes it more difficult for sure. Some of this out, it is just taking too long. <laughs> if this was easy, we wouldn't do it, would we? Oh, look at that. Okay. So, we now have access to our plastic gauge. We can take a reading. I'm going to go ahead and lift the, lift the camera off the stand, and we'll take a look at it. Right, well, we're going to finish up this video real quickly um, with measuring of the plastic gauge. It's the phone down here, the camera down here, we can see it proper. And uh, what you do with the plastic gauge here is you use a little gauge that comes on the packet. And uh, if you can see right there, basically that's 15 thousandths. Certainly smaller than uh, the uh, one thousandths. And, uh, about 15 thousandths is a good guesstimate, I think. And truthfully, this is guesstimation. When it comes to plastic gauge, but it gives you some confirmation of your dimensions. Uh, basically, we've got 15 thousandths in all, all five places. You can see the plastic gauge there. And uh, 15 thousandths is the number. 15 thousandths is in spec. So we've got uh, proper bearing clearance for our crank. So our main should run with Proper oil pressure, good lubrication, and uh, uh, critical to the bottom end of the motor that your mains be correctly sized. So what do we do? We're going to add a, um, we're going to add assembly lubrication to uh, the main bearing surface uh, that we took off, and we're going to um, retorque uh, the heads. Oh, excuse me, the mains back to 70 foot pounds, and we're going to consider the uh, that portion of it done. After that, we go into weight mode. And we wait on our pistons to get back and then our heads to get back. So we'll be wrapping this uh, motor back up in plastic for the night after I get these back on there. And I wouldn't worry too much about the assembly lube uh, or about the, excuse me, the plastic gauge. The oil will dissolve it, but uh, you can wipe it off if you'd like. That's just fine too. So anyway, we'll put this together and hopefully next time we come back, we're installing pistons. Thanks. Bye-bye.